us there was nothing we could do about it. The Silence of the Lambs finally opened on Valentine's Day 1991. A seemingly odd choice, considering the film's grisly nature. It was a crazy idea, in some ways, to put out a scary movie on Valentine's Day. But Jonathan actually had the idea, look, this is a great date movie. There was something about this film, something about Clarice and Dr. Lecter, that said Valentine's Day to me. And so we opened the Sounds of the Lambs on Valentine's Day in 1991, thinking, here's your date movie, America. <laughs> and it worked. The Silence of the Lambs slaughtered the competition at the box office. Opening at number one, the film would rack up the eighth highest grossing weekend of the year while scaring up a seat of $14 million. Audiences, they want a roller coaster ride. Man, it was just boom, boom, up and down, up and down. Laughter, yeah. Oh, hard. Turning it away. I can't look at it. Gotta look at it. People want to crazy. <laughs> the gas, the, the flash, the screams, the, you know, it was really wonderful. The impact on audience would help the Silence of the Lambs stay at the number one spot for five weeks, pulling in just under $70 million. It would continue in the top ten for a total of three months. Since the Silence of the Lambs came out, the economics of movies have radically changed. Now it's all about the first weekend. It wasn't that way in 1991. A movie like the Silence of the Lambs could come out and build as people told their friends about it. It was a word of mouth movie. People who might not have gone to see the movie heard from their friends, hey, that's a really scary movie, and so people went, and we had a chance to really sit in the theaters and build an audience and make some money. The pictures that I had done before, Silence of the Lambs, some of them had done okay. Some of them had done very poorly. And I had actually started to wonder, is there something about me that prevents me from directing something successful? So that when silence opened in the number one position, and then yet another week, and, and, and yet another, it was, it was very exciting. Uh, it was just very, very exciting, very gratifying. But amidst all the success, there was one discordant note. The film came under fire from gay rights groups that considered the character of Buffalo Bill a demeaning stereotype. Buffalo Bill is a disco dancing, cross-dressing, woman-hating, poodle-loving guy, and poodle being precious. And to many people, including me, that was code for he's gay. There was a huge outcry against this movie. <laughs> if I have any regret with silence, it's that, it's that we didn't emphasize the fact that Jane Gum and his persona had nothing to do with sexuality. It had to do, as Dr. Lecter describes, find somebody who hates themselves so much that they will do anything to turn themselves into someone who has no resemblance to themselves. The good news is that it raised a discussion point about portrayal of gays in American movies. Despite the controversy, audiences continued to pour into theaters, helping the Silence of the Lambs finish at number four for the year, bringing in $130 million in the U.S. and nearly $300 million worldwide, over 15 times its original budget. It would also go on to be nominated for seven Academy Awards, Thanks to a relatively new technological advancement. And the silence of the last. We certainly would never thought we had any Oscar chance of opening a year before the Oscar ceremony that we would be eligible for. And it helped that it, it came out on the video. It was the first time a movie had ever been in Oscar consideration at this party on the video tape. And those were distributed to Academy voters. So I think it, it had a sort of second life. And when awards night finally came, and screenwriter Ted Talley won for best screenplay, which was ironically enough presented to him by Robert Duvall, an early frontrunner for the role of Pamela Lecter, he knew it would be their night. I stood in the wing and watched uh, Tony Hopkins win. And when he got a standing ovation, I said, we're going to sweep. In a stunning upset, The Silence of the Lambs would in fact go on to sweep the Big Five Academy Awards, with Jodie Foster winning for Best Actress, Jonathan Demme Best Director, and the film for Best Picture. Yeah. 
the only horror movie to have such success at the Oscars. The only other movies to have a clean sweep of the major awards where it happened one night, Clark Cable, and then years and years later, one flew over the Cuckoo Center. Wow, what an incredible moment. <laughs> All of us backstage, there's a thousand Oscars between us, you know, covered in sweat, and just like laughing and giggling. What do you think Hannibal Lecter would say upon receiving this Oscar? Why if I hadn't received it, you'd all be in trouble. <laughs> incredible, incredible moment where you did something that you believed in and for only that reason, because you loved it and because you believed in it, and then suddenly you're standing in front of thousands of people kind of living this weird dream together. It just was an amazing moment. After their amazing run, Foster, Danny, Hopkins, and the rest of the team were all rumored to be reprising their roles for the sequel to The Silence of the Lambs. But in 1999, when Thomas Harris released his follow-up novel, Hannibal, there would be a major difference of opinion on who would in fact commit to the film. I just thought, I can't do this.